Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. We have integral x from 0 to 1, x ln 1 plus x over 1 minus x. We have the square of this logarithm in the denominator plus pi squared all squared. Let's start by doing a change of variables y equal to 1 minus x over 1 plus x. When x is 0, y is 1. When x is 1, y is 0. x is 1 minus y over 1 plus y. dx is minus 2 dy over 1 plus y all squared. This minus sign is used to have the limits of integration from 0 to 1. And this is dx without the minus sign. What we have in the numerator is ln 1 over y. This is minus ln y. The denominator becomes y squared plus ln y squared all squared. We have minus 2, 1 minus y. We have 1 plus y cubed in the denominator. Let's do the substitution. Z equal to 1 over y. When y is 1, z is 1. When y tends to 0 from above, z tends to infinity. dy is minus dz over z squared. And the minus sign is used to have the integration from 1 to infinity. Len y is minus len z. So we can remove this minus sign here. The fraction becomes 1 minus z to the minus 1 over 1 plus z to the minus 1 whole cubed. We have this 1 over z squared. We can multiply upstairs and downstairs by z. In the numerator, we get z minus 1, which can be written as minus 1 minus z. In the denominator, we get the cube of 1 plus z. Our integral of interest is given by this expression and also by that expression. The integrand is exactly the same. Here, we have the integration from 0 to 1. There, we have it from 1 to infinity. We can write down our integral of interest as the sum of these two integrals divided by 2. And when we sum the integrals, we just get one integral from 0 to infinity. Here is the averaging. Then these two guys can be combined as integral y from 0 to infinity, 1 minus y over 1 plus y cubed, ln y over the square of pi squared plus ln y squared. What happens when we differentiate with respect to y? Pi squared plus ln y squared to the minus 1. We get minus. In the denominator, we have pi squared plus ln y squared all squared. In the numerator, we have 2 ln y times 1 over y. We use this to do integration by parts. When we consider the product of these two functions, if y approaches 0, then this is 0. We have y in the numerator, and we have ln y squared in the denominator. This tends to plus infinity as y tends to 0. If y tends to infinity, we have y squared in the numerator, but we have y cubed in the denominator, and we also have this ln y. So this integral here is minus 1 half, 1 over pi squared plus ln y squared. Then we differentiate this function here with respect to y. We obtain this rational function. I write the numerator in terms of y plus 1 rather than in terms of y so that we have cancellations with the 1 plus y in the denominator. The numerator here is y plus 1 squared. So we have our y squared, but we get 2y. And here we have minus 4y. We subtract 6 times y plus 1. So we have minus 4y, but we get an extra minus 6. So we need to add 6. This fraction here can be written as 1 over y plus 1 squared minus 6 over y plus 1 cubed plus 6 over y plus 1 to the power 4. Define the function omega of n where n is a positive integer to be the integral x from 0 to infinity. In the denominator, we have pi squared plus ln x squared times 1 plus x to the power n. Comparing the expression of omega of n with what we have here, the integral of interest is minus 1 half times omega of 2 plus 3 times omega of 3. This 3 because of the minus 6 divided by minus 2 minus 3 omega of 4. What is the integral omega of n? To be proven later, omega of n is 1 over n factorial integral y from 0 to 1, y times this product. We multiply the terms k minus y, k from 1 to n minus 1. Note that the integrand here is a polynomial. In omega of 2, this product has just one term, which is 1 minus y. The integral of y from 0 to 1 is 1 half. The integral of minus y squared is minus 1 third. The difference here is 1 over 6 times 1 half, we get 1 over 12. This is omega of 2. Omega of 3, we have two terms in the product, 1 minus y and 2 minus y. The integrand is this cubic polynomial. The outside factor is 1 over 3 factorial, which is 1 over 6. When we integrate from 0 to 1, we get 1 from here, minus 3 over 3 from here, that's minus 1. Finally, we get 1 fourth. Omega of 3 is 1 over 24. Finally, omega of 4 has an integral representation where this product has three terms, 1 minus y, 2 minus y, and 3 minus y. If we multiply, we get an integrand, which is a quartic polynomial. Integrating term by term, we get the value 19 over 720. Blogging in the values of omega of 2, omega of 3, and omega of 4, we get that our integral of interest is 1 over 240. We have obtained the value of the integral of interest, but now we need to establish this result here, that omega of n, which is this integral, can be written in this way. 
the first step is to split the integral from zero to infinity into an integral from zero to one and another from one to infinity. The integral from zero to one is written here using the dummy variable of integration y, and we do a change of variables y equal to one over x. The limits of integration become from one to infinity. We replace y by x to the minus one. We multiply the numerator and denominator by x to the power n. This x to the power n times the bracket gives us one plus x to the power n, x to the power n over x squared. We have x to the n minus two. We can combine the two integrals by summing the integrands. In the denominator, we have one plus x to the power n, i squared plus ln x squared. In the numerator, we have one plus x to the n minus two. This bracket here is represented using the Laplace transform of the sine function. Integral from zero to infinity, e to the minus at sine bt dt is b over a squared plus b squared, which means that we can write one over a squared plus b squared as one over b integral t from zero to infinity, e to the minus at sine bt. We set a to ln x and b to pi. This integral from zero to infinity is written as summation g from zero to infinity, integral from g to g plus one of this integrand. Let's do the substitution t equal to y plus g. When t is equal to g, y is equal to zero. When t is equal to j plus one, y is equal to one. Sine by t becomes sine by between brackets y plus g. This is sine by y cosine by g. g is an integer, cosine by g is minus one to the power g. Sine by t becomes sine by y times minus one to the power g. This t here is replaced by y plus g. So we can split the exponential into e to the minus g times ln x. And this can be taken outside the integral. In the integral with respect to y, we have e to the minus y times ln x. Note that x is greater than one, so ln x is positive. We do the sum first. The summation we have is g from zero to infinity. We have something to the power g, which is minus e to the minus ln x. That's one over x. x is greater than one. This is the ratio of the geometric series. It is less than one in magnitude. We have a convergent geometric series that is equal to one over one plus one over x. Or x over one plus x. We can use the extra one plus x to write down this term here as one plus x to the power n plus one. Interchange the order of integration. If in this double integral, we replace y by one minus y, sine by y becomes sine by minus pi y, which is equal to sine by y. So this step only changes this one minus y to y. Let's take omega n and this double integral again. Now we do a change of variables, w equal to one over x. The integral becomes from zero to one. Every x is replaced by w to the minus one. After simplifying, we get integral w from zero to one, w to the y times one plus w to the n minus two. In the denominator, we have one plus w to the n plus one. Renaming w as x, we get this double integral here. We have these two expressions for omega of n. We have the same integrand. The integral with respect to x here is from one to infinity. The integral with respect to x there is from zero to one. We can write omega n as the sum of these two integrals divided by two. And when we sum the integrals, the integral with respect to the variable x will be from zero to infinity. This result is useful because once we have this integral with limits from zero to infinity, we can express it using the data function beta of z1 and z2 with real parts that are strictly positive is integral t from 0 to infinity t to the z1 minus 1 over 1 plus t to the z1 plus z2. If we take x to the power y times 1, we get beta of this power plus 1. The second argument of the beta function is n plus 1 minus the first argument, so n minus y. We have another beta function that comes from multiplying x to the y times x to the n minus 2. Now the power is y plus n minus 2. We add 1 to get n plus y minus 1. And I will write this argument here. Recall that the beta function is symmetric in its two arguments. The other argument should be n plus one minus this quantity here, that's two minus y. If we want to do things in slow motion, we can split this integral into two integrals. In the second integral, we have beta of minus y plus two, n plus y minus one. We can change y to one minus y. Sine by y remains the same. The arguments of the beta function become y minus one plus two, that's y plus one and n plus one minus y minus one, that's n minus y. By doing this change, the arguments of the beta function are exactly like here. This means that our integral is just this part multiplied by two. Omega of n is one over y, integral y from zero to one sine by y. Then we have the beta function with arguments y plus one and n minus one.
Now we express the integrand using the gamma function. The beta function is gamma of y plus one, gamma of n minus y divided by gamma of the sum, which is n plus one. We can also write down this sign by y using the reflection formula for the gamma function. Pi over sine by z is gamma of z times gamma of one minus z. So sine by y over y is one over gamma of y, gamma of one minus y. Gamma of y plus one from the properties of the gamma function is equal to y, gamma of y. These two terms go away. Gamma of n plus one can be taken outside the integral and this is n factorial. The integrand is this y times gamma of n minus y over gamma of one minus y. Gamma of n minus y is n minus one minus y, gamma of n minus one minus y. Gamma of n minus one minus y can be written as n minus two minus y, gamma of n minus two minus y. And we keep doing this till we get one minus y, gamma one minus y. This term and that term go away and we are left with this product here which can be written as product k from one to n minus one, k minus y. This is the proof of the lemma used to obtain our integral of interest.